guys welcome back to my channel after such a long break today we are going to be making something special and it's called african local seasoning ogiribo i will be using sesame seeds for this ogiri though you can make use of any oil seeds available to you to make ogiri like melon seeds soya beans and locust beans which is the most popular uh, beans or seeds that we use for ogiri from where i come from i will be soaking the sesame seeds overnight because i want to shorten the cooking process if you have a pressure cooker you don't have to do this particular step you can skip it if you have a pressure cooker if you don't want to soak this overnight you can actually soak it for about five to eight hours during the daytime I'm going to cover this up and set it aside till the next morning. The next morning. It's the next day already. Let's see how soft the sesame seeds get after being soaked throughout the night. As you can see, these seeds can easily be squashed after being soaked overnight. And that is exactly what we are looking for. This will help to shorten the cooking time because we will be using stove or gas cooker to cook this. So I'll go ahead and drain out all the water that we soaked the seeds in and I'm going to be cooking with a new clean water. Another thing worth mentioning is if you don't have a pressure cooker and also you don't feel like going through this process of soaking overnight, I think you should get prepared to at least cook your sesame seeds for about 2 hours or more so that it can get properly cooked. This liquid right here, you can decide to throw it away or not. I myself use it as a hairspray to moisten my natural hair before use applying any other product on my hair. If you've watched this video till this point and you haven't subscribed to this channel, please, please, pretty please, just click on that subscribe button to support my ministry. As you guys can see, I've poured in clean water into the spot and I'll be cooking the sesame seeds till it gets soft. After cooking for about 20 minutes, this is what the seeds look like. The seeds are okay at this point but I decided to cook it for extra 25 minutes to be on the safer side and to get it to be softer. You guys can see how squashable these seeds are after the first 20 minutes of cooking. So here I added more water off cam to continue the cooking. After the extra 25 minutes, this is what the seeds look like now. As you can see, they are even softer. I think in total, I cooked the sesame seeds for about 45 to 50 minutes. And now we proceed to draining out all the liquid that is still remaining in this pot so that we can move on to blending, mashing, pounding, anything that you can do to get the seeds to become a paste. And this liquid right here, you don't need to throw it away if you don't want to. You can use it to prepare any other food or you can use it to blend the sesame seeds. And now it's time to blend. If there is any way that you can blend the seeds without adding liquid or water, that would be the best option. But if you can't, then I advise you to add water to help your blender to blend. As you guys can see, I'm trying so hard to blend the seeds without any water, but I'm having so much trouble trying to do that. So I'm going to add water to help my blender because the paste was so thick that I could not blend it without any liquid so I have to add water to it. However, if you have a very good food processor or a strong blender that can handle the seeds without adding water to it then you have an advantage. 
also i'm blending these seeds in batches because there is no way my blender can handle all of the sesame seeds at a time this is what my first batch looks like the the paste is not so watery it's okay it's not so smooth but it's okay like that I will go ahead and start with the second batch and this time around I added more water because it was faster for me and I didn't waste more time. This is what the second batch looks like. It's smoother than the first batch and a little more liquidy than the first batch as well. And that is not a problem guys. The next step will be to drain out all the water that was used to blend the seed. As you guys can see, I'm using a mesh net right here to drain out all the water. This mesh net is the real deal. Nothing escapes it except water. In order not to put anything to waste, I'll be rinsing out my blender to get out every single paste that, that is inside this blender. As you guys can see, the water is already being separated from the paste itself so just look inside the the bowl the water you can see the water there it's already there is already being separated from the from the paste and now i'm going to continue to press it out to press out the remaining water so that i will have only the paste and this liquid right here can also be used to cook in fact i advise you not to throw away this liquid because a lot of nutrients are also packed in this liquid i think that this liquid can be used to cook uh this our, our, our nigerian porridge yam you can equally use it to make any recipe that that you find interesting so but the thing is don't throw away the liquid because it has so much nutrient in it However, if you decide not to cook with it, you can as well leave it for some days to ferment at the end of which so this its oil will come to the surface and you can use the oil for whatever you want to. Guys, you can see what this paste looks like without its water. So, but we, we're, not, we're not yet done, we're, we're still going to continue to press it out because there is still water in it. So we'll continue the pressing until we have as much as little water in it. So you continue to press out this water until you notice that there is no more water coming out from the base or maybe there are just droplets of water coming out. And here is what you are looking for, a paste that has little or no water in it. As you can see, even from the way the paste can be molded shows you that it is just perfect. yes 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 we are in the next stage the stage of fermentation so here i'm just wrapping up the net because i'll be fermenting the paste inside this net and why i'm doing this is because if there are still any water remaining in this paste it will escape by the time it's fermenting but if you blended the seeds without any water or you mashed it without any water you don't need to to ferment in the net you can just put your paste straight into any container of your choice you know a tight lid container and then you can ferment in a warm place as you can see i'm wrapping my container in a, in a plastic bag and why i'm doing this is because my 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 plastic container has uh, the lid has an opening and I don't want the, you know, the little warmth that I have to escape from that little uh, opening in the lid. So that is why I'm wrapping it all up with two nylon, nylon bags so that the warmth will, you know, be preserved while I'm fermenting it. For the fermentation process to take place properly, you need to put this away in a warm place where it will not be disturbed for as long as it will be fermenting. 
as you can see i'm using my rice cooker for that if you have an oven please do use an oven and if you don't have an oven as well you can just find a place that is very warm and just keep it there as long as it's not disturbed the fermentation period for ogiri needs between four days to 10 days or more if you are in a warmer climate you need about four days to five days and you will see results but if you're in a place whereby it's very cold in a, in a colder uh, climate maybe during the winter period you will need from seven to ten days or more for you to see results and the result I'm talking about for you to know that you are successful in your process of making ogiri is when you perceive a very pungent smell you know a very unwelcoming smell that is when you know that your ogiri you've gotten what you want in your ogiri also the texture of the ogiri will change it will become softer the longer you leave the ogiri to ferment the softer it becomes the texture will no longer be moldable like it was before it will become you know sticky and it can sm smear all over your hand if you touch it so right now i'm transferring the already fermented ogiribo into an airtight jar which i will place in the refrigerator to stop the fermentation process and also to prevent the pungent smell from you know escaping and polluting the whole air in my house So finally guys, here is what our ogiribo looks like. You can use this ogiribo to cook any African soup of your choice. And this is where we end today's video. So guys, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. Thanks and goodbye.